Beside the Brook, the story of someone who found the truth, written by Catherine MacDonald. Beside the Brook, Chapter 17, Friends in Need Mrs. Broom was busy making rabbit pie for dinner. The house was quiet, for Peggy and John were at school, and baby Patrick lay sleeping happily in his cot. She chopped the parsley, then went to the stove and stirred a small saucepan of beef tea. "'That will soon be ready for him,' she said to herself. "'He ought to feel better after he's had it.' He was Teddy, who was spending the fourth week of illness in the cottage bedroom overlooking the orchard. A bowl of snowdrops had spread their petals wide in the sunshine of his room, and a leafless spray of japonica studded with coral buds peeped over the sill. Teddy had been watching puffs of white cloud sailing across the blue sky. Many thoughts passed through his mind as weakly yet contentedly. He lay in the little wooden bed, but his main feeling was one of gratitude to God for his goodness in providing loving friends in his hour of need. Frequently he dozed, to waken shortly and open his eyes in the sunshine flooding the room. It had been difficult for Mr. and Mrs. Broom to persuade the old shepherd to come to their home, not until Christmas time had they learned of the injury to his arm, for Teddy had tended the bite himself until the limb grew stiff, and he had been compelled to visit the doctor, who promptly put it in a sling and forbade him to use it. Peggy had brought home the news one afternoon. Mother, she said, it's awfully awkward for Teddy to look after himself with his arm in a sling. "'Can we go and do jobs for him?' "'Certainly, dear. But what's the matter with it? "'Run and tell him to come along here.' "'Teddy came, but politely ignored Mother's inquiry "'as to the cause of the injury. "'Oh, it's nothing. It'll soon get well,' he assured her. "'Mrs. Broom was not so certain. "'She made appetising soups and steamed puddings for him.' did his washing, and sent the children regularly to bring reports of their old friend. But January found him growing more frail, and it was the worst time of the year, so that Mr. and Mrs. Broom were concerned about his welfare. "'He could have the little room over the porch,' said Mother. "'He would make scarcely any extra work, and he's so good.' "'Well, if you can only prevail him to come till the worst of the winter is over, "'that would help him over this stage,' said her husband. "'But he'll go from bad to worse in that cheerless little hut, and perhaps die. "'How old is he?' "'About seventy-five. "'Oh, said father, "'it's a marvel he has ever been able to stick that life so long.' They miss him on the farm. I'm not surprised, said Mother. We'll do our best to persuade him to come. After all, it's nothing more than our Christian duty to tend the poor old soul, and the children will love to have him in the house. Teddy made a number of excuses to support his independence, but cold and stiffness entered the injured arm which refused to heal, and the dampness of winter gripped his frame. Unable to manage the work of his humble dwelling, he felt the discomfort and the trial of inaction. Feeding the ducks, whom winter had made hungry than ever, was a burden, but still the old man did not grumble. The Lord is good to me, he assured himself, and Kenneth, who was also anxious about the old shepherd's health. "'I know the brethren will look after you "'if you will allow me to tell them,' said the young man. "'Teddy could not meet often with those of his faith, 
and winter conditions prevented those who paid him an occasional visit from seeing him during the worst months. But Teddy was firm. Don't tell them, he said. I won't be a burden to anyone. I've kind friends here. I'll be fine when the spring comes. Vainly Kenneth pointed out that rather than being a burden, tending him would be a privilege. Perhaps I can come and live here with him, he planned. But in proving on the idea, he sought the advice of Mrs. Broom. What can be done about our old friend, he asked. Could we get a room for him at the farmhouse or the dairyman's cottage? Is he any worse today? asked Mrs. Broom quickly. I fancy he is worse than he was two days ago, replied Kenneth. He doesn't say much, and it's unlike him to be silent. That settles it, said Mrs. Broom decidedly. Whether he wants to or not, he's coming here. My husband and I have discussed it already, and it's only Teddy's independent spirit that has stopped him coming before he got as weak as this. I'll go round myself and see him. Kenneth accompanied her, and found the shepherd lying in his bunk with the brown blanket over him, and a small fire in the grate. "'You are coming to us this very night,' announced Mrs. Broom. "'My husband and I are determined that you shall. "'I'll get your things ready now, and when I'm gone, father will come and fetch you.' Teddy was preparing to protest. "'It must be some queer notion of pride that makes you refuse,' she said, collecting his necessities. She refrained from using the word stubbornness though it was on the tip of her tongue. "'Yours is a case where you have to swallow your pride, if I may say so, for your friend's peace of mind,' said Kenneth. "'It may be hard for you to give in, but it's the right thing to do. I'm convinced.' "'Then I'll come,' said the old man feebly. "'Maybe I'll be able to recompense you in some way when I'm better.' "'Forget about it, please,' begged Mrs. Broom. "'It's a pity if one can't show a little neighbourly kindness "'without this constant idea of paying back. "'Stay here, Kenneth, while I run home and get father.' "'So Teddy had been transferred to the bright, cosy bedroom above the porch, "'where a fire burned to greet him and a warm, comfortable bed stood ready.' with counterpane turned back to receive him. The children were thrilled at the coming of their guest, but Mother stressed the fact that as Teddy was ill, they must not worry him with their attentions or noise. "'We'll be as good and quiet as we were when Pat came,' promised John. "'What about the ducks?' asked his sister. "'We've already arranged about them.' said her mother. As it is too dark and muddy in the mornings to go to see to them, Daddy is putting them in the old hen run along the wall, and they will be quite all right sleeping in the empty kennel with a board in front. Very soon Teddy was glad he had come. I'll get better all the sooner new, I hope, he said cheerfully. But the doctor was not so sure. The arm, however, began to mend. "'It was caused by a fox biting him, you must know,' said he to Mrs. Broom. "'I'm satisfied with the progress of the wound, but his inability to move about normally during the damp weather has allowed the cold to settle in him. His lungs are not too fit.' "'I'll do my best to look after him as if he were one of my family,' said Mother. "'I know you will,' smiled the doctor, shaking her hand warmly. Teddy was delighted to receive a visit one Sunday from two of the brethren, as he described them to his kind hosts. They spent the whole of the afternoon in his room, and another hour in the dining-room with the family. Mr. Broom especially was interested in their conversation, which he recounted to his wife after the departure of their guests had 
left her free from the duties of hospitality. There's a great deal of truth in what they believe, he said. It surprises me that we've never heard a breath of it before. A great deal of truth, exclaimed Mother. As far as I can see, it's all truth. And I'm going to make it my business to follow it right through. The goodness and patience of that dear old man upstairs have proved to me that he's animated by something true and worth while. I hope he'll be able to take a little rabbit pie, said Mother to herself on this day as she busied with her cooking. I'll put a slice or two of bacon and some hard-boiled eggs in it to make it attractive. The old man was thinking about his sheep when she took up the tray. Have ye heard how the flock is faring, Mrs. Broom? he asked. Now don't you worry about them, reproved Mother kindly. You handle them long enough, and ably enough, to show Father Wilmot and every one of his men how to go on with the job. That young farmhand, Leonard Gibson, has taken them on. And as far as I've heard, everything is all right. It will soon be lambing season, he said. To look at yon sky, you would think it was so already. Yes, it's a wonderful day for early February, replied Mrs. Broom as she placed the hot dinner on a small bed table. Now try and eat plenty of the vegetable and gravy, she coaxed draping father's dressing gown around the old man's shoulders. Teddy did his best, which pleased Mrs. Broom when she came with a fruit plate of stewed pears and custard. Eat this too, she said, and then I shall know you'll be all right while I go to the village this afternoon. I have to get the groceries, but I shan't be more than an hour. When Peggy and John had returned to school and Father had gone back to work on his ground, Mrs. Broom dressed Baby Pat in his snug woolly suit ready for going out, and then ran upstairs to see if the invalid was comfortable. "'I'm leaving the door unlocked, Teddy,' she said, "'in case the doctor comes, and if you hear anyone in the kitchen, that will only be the baker.' "'That's fine,' said Teddy with a smile. You wait on me hand and foot. God bless you. Pat was a rosy-cheeked baby and enjoyed his pram rides to the full. At six months he had four teeth, which he tried out on a bone ring, a dangle with bells, and could sit up and greet every cat and dog he passed with a bubbling goo-goo. Mother dared not put anything that took his fancy within his reach, for he quickly pitched it out and clapped his hands. In this way she had lost one of her furry gloves, and a packet of tea while looking the other way. Had Pat's own gloves not been tied securely on, they would have disappeared also. Now he tugged at his hat strings till Mother put her finger up, saying, "'Naughty boy! You mustn't do that!' Pat switched his attention to a flock of rooks twisting in the sky, and held up his little hand to show Mother. "'Yes, dear,' she said. "'Caw, caw! That's what the big birds say!' Then Pat showed her something else. A tall horse looking over the hedge with long ears pricked up. "'That's a horse,' said Mother. Pat was too young to say anything but goo. His woolly paw flung out again, this time to point out a man rapidly overtaking his pram. Mrs. Broom heard the approaching footsteps, but did not turn. "'Excuse me, madam,' he said, raising his hat. "'Am I in the right direction for Mr. Wilmot's farm?' "'No,' she replied, "'but you haven't come far out of your way. Just turn back. These are the fields, and those are the buildings.' "'You can see the farmhouse roof, that grey one,' she pointed out. "'Thank you,' said the stranger, turning and almost darting away. "'Whoever does he remind me of?' mused Mrs. Broom. "'I know someone with features like that and a similar voice, "'but I can't think who it is.' "'Baby Pat suddenly seized his pram cover and rolled it up into a ball.' 
"'No, you don't,' said his mother, tucking it tightly into the sides of the pram. And immediately she forgot the stranger.' 